Hi, this is Nancy Rolfsma with On Point TV. The last video we did was on making masks, and these are kind of a mask that you can use with this whole coronavirus going on. And so this is going to be a follow-up video to that video, and I called it the No, Ma no Elastic fa Face Mask because I have come up with a design that doesn't require any elastic, and I will take you through step-by-step step how to make that, and there is a pattern available too if you choose to make it. But before we do that, I want to clear up some information, I guess. First of all, I am not a scientist. I'm not in the medical field whatsoever. I'm a sales rep at a company, and I make quilts. That's what I do. So the information that I am giving you is information that I have done some research just online, um, trying to get, you know, reputable sources. But the information I want to give you now is just to clear up some, in, some I don't know, there's just so much being said out there, all right? First and foremost, I've had people asking me for the pattern, and when some people are asking for their pattern, they're asking for the coronavirus pattern. No, this isn't a coronavirus mask. The, I, I do not give any um, credence to that this would ever keep anybody perfectly safe from it. And that's one of the problems with the mask to begin with. The other thing is this is not a surgical mask. This is a fabric mask that may help prevent some of the spread of the disease. A lot of the study that I've done, one point really brought it to um, head with me, and I thought this was really important, that sometimes the worst part about a virus like this is the touching of your face. A virus like this, you won't get it if it just touches your hand and you wash your hand. But if you touch anything that has a virus on it and then touch your face, that's where the virus is gonna get into you. So a lot of the um, researchers online suggest that the mask idea is a great way to keep you from touching your face. So kind of keep that in mind, all right? So I've got myself some notes here. I wanted to be sure that I covered the things that I wanted to cover. The next thing is about the N95 mask. Now, I have a friend who has had, he is not hoarding these, I swear to you, this is an old one that has been used and he's had this for about 10 years. So I'm not sure if this is the exact design of what the N95 mask currently looks like, but from what I've seen on TV, it's definitely not far from it. And when you have this mask, first of all, there's these elastics that go around the back of your head. And this is what the doctors and nurses are wearing if they can get them. And hopefully we'll be getting some more. So it has this elastic that goes around the back. It's got a foam piece on the inside. And I love this nose pinch. It's almost a jewelry grade metal so that when you pinch that to your nose, it's going to stay where, right where it wants. Well, the truth is, is we can't get these, right? The normal public can't get an N95 mask. So we're trying to make masks that will help us hopefully prevent the spread of this virus. So with our hospitals here in Grand Rapids, they have asked us to make masks that they can wear over their N95 mask to make the N95 mask last longer. Because this is, through testing, has showed that it can um, keep 95% of those little molecules from going through. The fabric masks in the studies I've read can keep about 67%. So when I designed this mask, I actually designed it so it could fit over the N95 mask, all right? The other issues are what fabric to use, all right? So in the studies, it has been 100% cotton is the best choice. When push comes to shove, anything can be better than nothing if it keeps you from touching your face and if you happen to have a cough or a sneeze to keep you from sneezing on others or if you have to take care of somebody that has a cough or a sneeze this could prevent it from coming and getting you onto your face too so i thought that was important that it's a hundred percent cotton when possible a tight weave and a jersey knit is the other one. So that's what my new mask is made out of. A jersey knit has a little bit of a stretch, so you don't need the elastic, okay? Um, and then I've had a lot of talk, people talking a lot about the filters. Do you put a filter in or do you not put a filter in? Well, obviously those in the hospital are not because they're using the N95 masks underneath it. 
And there are hospital grade filters that only those in the hospital can get that have like some sort of a carbon sort of a filter in it. That would be awesome, but we can't get those. So people have been talking about whether or not you should cut up vacuum cleaner bags or coffee filters or any of that kind of a filter. The truth is, is I'm not really sure, but what I know for sure is when I have tried that, putting a filter in the mask, my face got so hot so fast I couldn't breathe because those filters don't breathe. So you've got to try it for yourself. The trick is to be able to wear the mask. So if putting a filter in makes it so uncomfortable that you can't wear the mask, then obviously the mask is going to be of no good. So instead of a filter, what I have found, especially with this particular design, is using a Trico interfacing. Now Trico, this is a fusible, and a Trico is the interfacing is what a seamstress, which is why I have it in my studio, uses when we want our, um, inner, our garment that we're making that has a little bit of stretch to really have a nice drape and a little bit of stretch also. So that's why I use this. So I'll take you through why, but I think that if you're thinking about adding an additional filter, a lightweight interfacing or something like this because this is a knit like the jersey knit is that they say you know helps keep the um the 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 stuff and the virus from coming into the mask um and so i think this might be a better idea for a filter again i'm not i'm not an expert i'm just giving you the information that i've kind of learned through all of this and all of the questions every time somebody asks me a question i go and do some more research and find out if maybe i'm giving you the best information that i can find next is whether or not you need to wash your mask yes you have to wash your mask if you think about when you're in the doctor's office if they have to wear a mask they put on their gloves they put on their mask they talk to you do whatever they're going to do then when it's time they take off their gloves take off their mask and wash their hands and then move on to the next room so cleaning the mask is really really important and I found a couple of things. So the University of Illinois Extension recommending washing white fabric in three quarter to one cup of bleach. You can sanitize colored fabric by pouring one, or you can sanitize by colored, sanitize colored fabric by pouring one cup of pine sol or Lysol disinfectant in the washer. So using your hot, hot water in your washer and some bleach or if it's a colored fabric and you don't want it to get white, you could use the Lysol or Pine Sol. So there's some other information on here also, but that is why I did this in a creamy white. This is a Jersey knit, and I thought if I was gonna bleach it, then that would be okay, because I have bleach, I don't have any Pine Sol. So in my home, there's one or, you know, I don't have any of that. So the information I got, I did put down all on a piece of paper, and Gina and Athena went through and made sure that I didn't spell any words wrong, which is really very easy for me to do. And this will be down in the bottom of this video. So when you're done watching the video, if you'd like to just have a list of the information that I found, all of it was found on the internet. So anybody can go out and find it yourself too, okay? So, but it's all in one place if you're interested. The pattern that I'm going to show you, that would be available too. Um, but for that, I think that you're going to have to either email me or go to our website, and it would be available on our website. Our website is onpoint-tv.com, and that's where you can find all the information on the mask and all the information about quilting, because remember, I'm a quilter. That's what I really am. So we're going to take you through the steps on how I made this mask using no elastic. Oh, and I did want to point out some other questions. I'm sorry, i got to back up a little bit. People have been asking me about what do you use for the nose pinch? If you're making that flat three pleat mask that I originally had the pattern for, um, you need to have something to pinch it down to your nose. So the ties, the twist ties, was a very good idea. If you take this, fold it in half, then that's going to be a nice pinch. It's going to keep it down on your nose. You know, the reason you need to have it pinched on your nose, not only to keep anything from coming in, but also to keep your breath from fogging up your glasses. If you've tried it without, you know exactly what I mean. Then there's the um, jewelry grade. So this is a 16 gauge wire that I just happened to have in my stash. I took it with some of this. This is a fabric 
um, tape, kind of like what you'd use, you know, if you have a boo-boo and you have to tape it down onto your um, arm and you don't have a band-aid. So I took that and put it inside that fabric tape and I was able to get that to pinch very nicely inside to, um, too. And then somebody just today said, what about speaker wire? It's covered in plastic and it holds the pinch you know, that held it pretty close, pretty good too. So whatever it takes to get a nose pinch, if you're making that three pleat um, mask, the, the pipe cleaner was another one people talked about quite a bit. And then it was discussed, well, that's going to rust when you watch it. Yep. I am really hoping that by the time it really rusts, we're not having to wear these masks anymore. Okay, so that's just my opinion. The other thing was without the elastic, I talked about the ties. That I came up with an idea of doing a tie so that it just went around your neck, went through the sides of the mask, and then you just had to tie it once on the top. So it was really easy. And what I really liked about that is it really helped keep the mask fit really, really nicely to your um, face. Because if the mask is not fit tight to your face, it's not going to keep anything out. So keep that in mind with all of the things that you're doing. So I found some ribbon. You know what? This ribbon would look work really nice, plus it would be pretty. And then there's the shoelace idea. So I had an adult shoelace. That worked out really, really nicely. Um, the quarter-inch bias tape. If you buy a double-fold quarter-inch bias tape and just sew the folds together, that makes a really, really nice tie. Then there's the elastics, and when it came to elastic, I talked last time about cutting down some of the thick elastic, because I don't know if you noticed or not, but there is no elastic to be had. All of the stores have been wiped out. People have been trying to order it. The manufacturers have to get more because the U.S. government needed it to make some masks, too. So they needed it more than we did. The other thing about the elastic is here in Grand Rapids, we have had some of the nurses say, could you make more with ties? because the elastic was really starting to bug the back of their ears having to wear it because they don't normally, I guess, have to wear that. So that's another reason that I like the tie. So if you're going to make that three pleat one or if you're going to make the um, other contoured one that I had the pattern for from the last video, then there's an option. You could do the ties instead of the elastic. With the new mask, you don't need a tie or elastic. So when I decided to come up with a new design, let me get some of this out of the way. I went through um, a lot of different <laughs> uh, designs. I tell you, I was cutting and I was bringing them upstairs, making Bill try them on. I'm trying them on. I'm wearing them for a half hour, making sure it didn't steam up too much, making sure the moisture didn't get condensed, you know, all filled up in the mask and make me really uncomfortable. So I was able to wear one for about an hour while doing some sewing, and it was pretty comfortable. So keep that in mind. Um, so one thing that I did originally, and I'm going to put one of these on here a second. So originally I put no interfacing in the mask. And then I decided I had to, and this is why. So when I put this on, goes over my ears, is quite comfortable. I'm not sure if you can hear me still, but this is the part that bothered me. Every time I breathed, it went in and out, and, and that just really annoyed me. So I'm like, all right, I have to put an interfacing in, and since this is a jersey knit, it only made sense that I would use the Trico knit interfacing. So now this is the one that's finished. It goes nicely under my chin, so it's really snug to my face. I don't have to put a pinch on here, even if I'm wearing my glasses, it's not getting all steamed, and it doesn't go in and out so extreme every time I breathe, okay? Let's take this off so you can hear me, and I'm going to take you through the steps on how to make it, okay? All right, so first off, we have the pattern. So I did, again, with my handy-dandy drawing skills, I drew a couple of them. I will probably have Teresa, our graphic designer, doll these up a little bit so they'll look a little nicer so that we can send them to you. I have a medium, which is the size I am wearing, and then the large one is the one that my husband was able to fit, telling you how to do it. And then you're going to cut that out. So just like last time, I cut it out of some Decker Bond interfacing. It's just a heavyweight interfacing that I know I can pin to, a pa to fabric a gazillion times, and it's going to hold together really nicely. 
I put it through four layers of the Jersey knit and cut out all four layers at once. Now the Jersey knit, you're gonna find it in different sizes and different designs. I told you why I chose a white color, um, but most of them come about 60 inches wide. One quarter of a yard is enough to make two of these masks. So if you're gonna go and find some Jersey knit, so I find, found mine, those of you in West Michigan, I went online to Fields Fabrics. It's one of our family owned fabric stores here in Grand Rapids. I was able to pick this up for a very reasonable price. Um, I am sure that fabric.com probably has it since we can't be going into shops right now. Take a look online, see what you can find. And a t-shirt would work too. You know, I got this old t-shirt from my husband a green one would be just a little bit gross, I think. But I'm thinking in a, a man's size t-shirt, I could easily get two masks out of this, okay? So I've cut it out four layers. And then I'm going to take my Trico interfacing. So this is a Trico interfacing. It comes 20 inches wide. I folded it in half twice. And then I just cut those into some squares, rectangles, I guess. Whoops. So that there was one layer of this and I pressed it down onto the one layer of my Jersey knit. I used one piece of interfacing on all of the pieces so that the mask will be two layers of Jersey and two layers of Trinco interfacing. So just a little sewing tip. One of the things that's kind of a pain when you're sewing is cutting out the interfacing. Well, I did not cut it out the exact size that I needed. I laid my mask down, wrong side down. I laid my rectangle of Trico interfacing down and then I laid my iron just right here. So I only heated it up in the middle. Then I took it to my mat and with my rotary cutter, I cut around the edges of it. So you do not have to cut your interfacing the exact shape of what the pattern is. After I cut all the excess around it, then I flipped it back, that one's hanging on, and then I took my iron and went over the whole thing so that it was in place. So you do not have to cut out your interfacing the exact same size, just cut that rectangle and that'll go on. So let me cut this last piece here. I should press the rest of it, but I left my iron up on the other side, so we're just not going to press the rest of it. Then I'm going to take the two good sides and put it together, and you're going to do this for both pieces. Oh my goodness, excuse me very much. Um, stay right where you at. I forgot my pin cushion. No pins are not going to get me going anywhere here. Okay, so, so now I'm going to take my pins, put my layers together. So I'm going to do this twice because there are four pieces of fabric and there is two layers. Now I'm going to sew just the front of it with about a, I'm going to just use the width of my foot, honestly, my sewing machine foot. So let's go on over. I already have the other half is already in the machine. So now I'm going to sew it right here at the beginning. I'm going to do a return, make a net locking stitch there. As you're going around, be sure that you lift your presser foot with your needle down so that you can get a nice smooth curve, never force it around. And then when you get to the end, there is a mark on the pattern that tells you where to taper off. So right there, I'm just gonna taper to the edge, do a back stitch again, whoops, and come on back. Back stitch didn't need to be quite that long and cut it off. All right, now back to our table. I've got my two pieces. Whoops, excuse me, Mr. Mask. All right, there's my two pieces already. Now I'm gonna take right sides together and pin them together. So right here at these seams, I'm gonna be sure that my seams are going in opposite directions. So the bottom one is going to my left, the top one is going to my right. That's gonna make it not seem so bulky. And if you're a quilter, that's what we call butting our seams together. So again, to the left and to the right and pin it in place. And then I'm gonna take my time and pin this all the way around 
I'm not going to do that all right now, but you're going to see what I mean. So even up here at the ear, I'm just going to pin it all the way around. And then we're going to sew it. So I have my one through the magic of television. This one is already sewn. All right. So here's my interfacing. Here's my sewing all the way around. So here up at the ear, if you'll just kind of go in, so right in the middle of whatever the ear hole is. And I know that people's ears are different sizes too, so maybe you have to make a bigger ear hole for certain times, for certain people, I mean. And there is also on the bottom an opening, and that is marked in the pattern also. So here I did a stop. Well, this is actually where I started with a back stitch. And I stopped, went all the way around and stopped there with the back stitch. All right. So I've sewn all the way around the mask. Now it's time to turn it right sides out. So just through that hole, flip the entire mask. After you get the mask turned, you're going to want to do a top stitch. So before you do a top stitch, you need to pin this all in place and again through the magic of television we're going to go to the one that I have that's already pinned so he's all pinned in place here at the opening right here I'm going to be sure that I pin that in place so that I'll be sewing that opening closed and when it comes to the ear piece this is what it's going to kind of look like right here on the outside edge of the ear piece it helps if you will trim that just a little bit so that the outside edge of the earpiece is smaller than the inside edge. So that when I turn this over, it will cover that. Just like that. I could have trimmed that a little bit better. I will go back and do that. And then I will put pins in that also going this way. Like that. And then I will top stitch all the way around that will close the hole and then this is what it's going to look like okay so here on the ear holes that is not a finished edge and that's okay it's a jersey knit it will not fray you don't have to have that be a um, finished edge but all the way around it it is this also could be done, you know, people have been wondering about the inside and the um, outside because this could be turned the other way you just want to when you're wearing it the day you're going to wear it the hour that you're going to wear it, whatever you're doing you want to just be having it so that this is the side i'm breathing into because typically when you take it off that's when you're going to wash it anyway and so when you wash it if it's flipped the other way it wouldn't matter it'd already be sanitized all right there you go that is my mask using no elastic Word of warning, it does take a little bit longer to make. I think that I can make one of these in 20 minutes. So if you're not a fast seamstress or you're not an experienced seamstress, it might take a little bit longer to make. You do need to get some jersey knit unless you have some t-shirts that, you know, the back side of the t-shirt's all, all one solid color. Go ahead and use that. And the front side of the t-shirt, you could make a t-shirt quilt out of, which is a class I'm going to teach once we get back to quilting here any day now, all right? If you have any questions... My email is quiltingwithnancy at gmail.com. The pattern is available on our website, or you could email me and I'll send it to you also just as soon as Teresa dolls it up for us a little bit. And then there is going to be a link below with just that list of the research so that you understand what these masks are really made for. I think the number one reason is to keep you from touching your face. That's what's really going to prevent the virus from coming to get you, I guess. Um, please continue to pray for our medical, um, the people in the medical field. They're working so hard under really, you know, circumstances that maybe they didn't think that they'd ever have to be working in. And our police and fire and, and all of these people that are doing this extra work while we're staying home and trying to stay safe ourselves and not need any of their assistance. Um, Everybody, please stay safe and have a great day.